Yeah. Hey, take two of uh, Ego on Break. Uh, I'm your host, Dynamite J. Andrews. Got the Mississippi Madman Logan Creed, and we're going to try this again as uh, had a little glitch with the phone and lost uh, about 13 minutes of talking. So, uh, as soon as the airplane leaves, we'll pick back up on where we're going. Uh, the airport's like five miles away, wherever hell it is. So, uh, we were talking about AEW Dark. Yeah. Um, I have really enjoyed AEW Dark. One of the things I enjoy most about it is you see a lot, a lot of wrestlers uh, right now that have came through Pro Wrestling Ego. Uh, this week's episode had seven matches. It was a supersized edition of AEW Dark. And out of the seven matches, four matches featured wrestlers that have wrestled for Pro Wrestling Ego. So, uh, you know, when I was telling people, hey, you know, come check out Ego because... You know, you're going to see these guys on TV eventually. Well, it's coming true. So, eventually, we're seeing them. I was thinking, didn't Brady Pierce, he wrestled down here in Brandon. Brandon <laughs> yeah, Brandon, right here. Uh, we're, yeah, yeah a, a mile and a half from where we're yeah, sitting now. That's true. Uh, yeah, that's Brady true. Pierce wrestled right there. That's right. Yeah. He was in, And then he was in the Southern Eight at the Hideaway. And uh, Brady's been on several events uh, here in this area for Ego. And he was on there. Uh, Sugar Dunkerton has been on a couple of... Uh, Egos. He was in the second Great Southern Eight, and uh, Fuego wrestled right down the road here in Pearl, and uh, Griff Garrison wrestled right, you know, again right down the road in uh, Rich, no, uh, McLaurin. So he came in. I can't remember. I know uh, I've seen. When we were doing the shows in Star uh, at oh, the high school okay. down there. He yeah, came yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Him and another guy. They were the uh, high school heartthrobs. I remember that. I do. Yeah. So. Uh, now he's channeling his inner uh, Marco stunt slash Jungle Boy with the wild hair. So <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why I didn't recognize him all the way. Yeah, I saw a lot of people going like AEW. Please put him in the Jungle Express just so you can see like many, medium, and large uh, versions of the same wrestlers. <laughs> like a bad perm going horrible. <laughs> but it is cool to see these guys that you know that we know. Uh, Low Rider, who is now. Uh, uh, Wes Warren has moved out to Texas and he's training in Lucha with Lowrider. So uh, that's pretty cool. We're probably going to see Lowrider in Ego in the future as uh, soon as the world gets back to uh, somewhat of a normalcy. Yeah, um, get away from the sickness. So uh, crazy thing is, is I think that's why I like AEW Dark is because it's a lot of people that I know. Um, Suge D, you know, like I said earlier, and then... Uh, I really enjoy Excalibur and Taz's commentary. I know Excalibur caught a lot of flack, and AEW caught a lot of flack from a lot of people for when they signed him to be the commentator. But I think he's really came into his own, and him and Taz make a great team. Yeah, like, they, uh, they play off each other better yeah. to me than Jr. and uh, Shivani. Shivani, like Shivani, and them would just give him hell. I mean, yeah, he gives Taz hell, and Taz gives him mm -hmm. hell. I think he kind of felt weird trying to give Jr. hell and Shivani hell because right. they're so much older. And I know, you know, Taz is probably not that much older than him, but they're closer. Well, to he age. may just be more relatable. Yeah, you know what I mean? So. Um, I think they're both New Yorkers, aren't they? Ah, no, his Calvary's from California. Is he? Okay, yeah. my bad. Um, there was one they were talking about uh, a chokehold or something. And he was trying to explain that it's not a chokehold. It was like actually cutting off blood to the brain, blah, blah, blah. And Taz's like, so we're right. So you're right and I'm right, but I'm more writer. You know, <laughs> that's, that's great, man. That's yeah. great. But, uh, so what do you think about AEW Dark? Like I said, the only problem I have with AEW Dark, I feel like I'm watching old Saturday night main event, <laughs> and I know literally who's going to win. Yeah. Yep. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing a squash guy beat a squash guy. Yeah, and I think you will. Squash guy. Um, I think right now they're just trying to establish these guys having some form of identity. Um, because in reality, like, they could have brought in Ricky Stark just like they're bringing these guys in. Yeah, and, that was uh, the other guy I was trying to think Yeah, about, and, sure. and, you know, uh, they didn't. They brought Ricky in the face of Griff, and, like, they're making Ricky a star. Um, which is cool because well, like we just saw him on NWA, you know, like I was gonna say he fought Cody for the TV belt. Yep, that's kind of how they bring him in. So, um, I kind of surprised. Oh, is he done with NWA? Yeah, he know? signed way. Oh, okay, I did not know that. Uh, well, and honestly, like I think that's a wow. I, that's who a, knows what's gonna happen to the NWA? Because in reality, the NWA could possibly be going away because, like, you know, they're you know not their number two. 
uh, it was uh, was on the list. The, the list. What? Oh, that list. Yeah, uh, not Jericho's list, but the other list. Number two. Uh, the speaking out. Yeah, like in their second in command. Wasn't he on the list? Oh, that old dude. I think no, he, they were gone or whatever. He's gone. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but like he was. Him and Billy was the one doing it, and like he was Probably running and editing and. <laughs> Like all the stuff, but and everything he was doing, you can hire somebody else to do. That's that's facts. Yeah, but can't yeah, but can you get that trust? You know what I mean? Like well, Billy good. put a lot of trust in him to handle well, stuff while he was on the there, road. There are other people so, that have this kind of power. Oh, I mean, I get it. I mean, God, he he has a lot of veterans under him, and I, I don't think that guy's irreplaceable. I, do I don't not. think anybody's irreplaceable other than the guy that's putting out the money. But yeah. I mean, um, but the fact is, like, Billy may be like, you know what? Enough's enough. Let's just call it quits. I don't think so with him, man, because everything he went through with Impact and now he's going through with NWA, he's just one of those guys that just won't stop. Like, he's he going to so. be like homeboy with a cocaine up in the bedroom. What was his name? I can't Herb remember. Abrams. Like, he went until he just couldn't go no more. <laughs> yeah, you know? he partied out. <laughs> you know? I'm not, I hate comparing to him, but that's literally all I could think of. Um. But, you know, he kept going until he just couldn't get no more. And I, I really think he'd be the same way. Yeah. But I, there, I don't think a guy's irreplaceable by, like, by any means. Yes, he does have knowledge and contacts and other stuff that nobody else probably has, but they got other contacts. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows somebody. Yeah. So That's the whole point of wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling isn't about what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. So uh, we were talking about earlier uh, Tessa Blanchard and the things that went down with her and her basically being fired and stripped of the title. Um basically being unprofessional yeah and and you were saying you see her going to either AEW or wwe i'm yeah. saying i think she's going to hide out in mexico for a while maybe do some wrestling down there um and then again this could all be a swerve and you can see her come back to impact and regain the title who knows it's wrestling yeah, well, it's man. 2020 uh anything possible and everything's offensive so i mean welcome to 2020 you know i guess i got thicker skin i'm just not that offended no more but well, uh you should be I mean, Elgin's gone now. The, uh, uh, the speaking out, which a lot of that, those guys, you know, if, a lot of those people needed to be, uh, I guess, I mean, look, you know, done away with. Uh, uh, I don't know, who's but some of, of it's what, just gone so too whatever. far. You know what I mean? Like Mr. Flippy, that didn't surprise me at all. With uh, Joey Ryan. Well, I mean, when you know, uh, when when your gimmick is, I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> bottom feeder, so to speak. Basically. So. But I was kind of with Jim Cornette on that. He's like, you know, every time I'd say something bad, he was Mr. Social Justice Warrior, but yep. now here it comes out with everybody talking yep. all this about him. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a weird world we live in. However, a lot of people need to be, you know, pointed out and cleaned up. You know. I, well, in my opinion, you know, it's a business. Uh, I never got involved in Treat any like wrestling. One, you know. So uh, I just treated it like, you know, these are my, uh, I'm not employees, but uh, yeah. people I work with. Yeah. You know, so I treated them as friends. I never wanted to go beyond anything like right. that. Uh, I know plenty of people that have yeah. dated inside of wrestling. and seen some go good and some go no absolutely bad. horribly right. wrong. So right. you don't know what's going to happen in wrestling. So what do you think is going to happen uh, in wrestling? Because uh, I saw this, D Dutch Mantel actually he, he doesn't get on Facebook very often, but when he does, it's pretty good stuff. And you kind of pay attention. Mm -hmm. He's like, do you think wrestling will ever return to where it was? And I commented, and he liked my comments. What did he say? And I don't know. What did you say? I'll look it up and tell you. I swear on the phone, but uh, some people get mad. Well, I mean, I, I think we're going to return to some form of normalcy, but I think when it does return, it's going to be a lot different, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like... Um, you're going to see a lot of people that you know, knew, uh, you know, followed, liked, whatever, supported. You're going to see those people gone. But then some of those same people, I think, are going to just be right back doing the same thing just for a different area. And, you know, nothing's ever going to happen. Like, you want me to read what he said and I'll give you my response? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, you got to speak loud so you hear says, uh, hello Facebook, here I am again. What have I been up to? Writing another book, hopefully to be out before Christmas. 
This one will cover a lot of things I didn't have room for the first two. I'll cover my going back to the WWE and managing Jack Swagger and how wrestling business have changed since then and maybe not for the better. I don't come here much, but when I do, I like to spark the conversation. So here's my question. Will wrestling ever be the same again? Personally speaking, I watch as little of wrestling as I can these days. It's hard for me to get invested to it anymore. I think wrestling jumped the shark about five years ago and has never recovered. When I was in WWE, it was sellouts every night, and Jack and I, as the real Americans, had people standing when we entered the ring, but that was then. I'm talking now. Will wrestling ever return to its former glory? Keep your answer short and concise. Yes or no, and why? So, my response was... Let me see. Let me find it again. Oh, there it is. I said no. It seems every match is the same. Everybody dives. Now it just seems nothing is special. It used to be different styles. Now it's all cookie cutter with bad promos. Some soap opera writer is writing. The fans try to hijack the shows, and it's just a mess to watch. So there's my opinion. I think that what we're going to see is a return of a throwback style of wrestling. I wish we would like that. Um, I think we're going to get to the point where it's going to be so hard to do, not necessarily to get views, not necessarily to sell t-shirts, but the actual ticket buying fan. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to get to a point where we are going to have to target the fan that is not on social media. And I think the only way to do that is to throw it back to what, what they liked when they watched wrestling like most of these people stopped watching wrestling because it got too far away from what their concept of wrestling was so i think that the concept of having you know wrestlers that look like they can beat you up you know uh wrestlers that you know and and i'm a short guy so i'm throwing myself in that wrestlers that are not five foot eight um, and if they are five foot eight, they better look like they just ate somebody. You know what I mean? Like uh, they they better look the part. Like the days of the out of shape, unathletic neighborhood kid wrestling, I think is going to be gone. Um, Backyard bunch, you mean? I th I think that the target audience is going to have to be not the person that's on social media because, and I'm a person on social media, so but like. You take like the Butcher and the Blade from uh, AEW, I think they would be stars. You know, why did uh, why did the Revival have such a following? Is because they didn't do... They knocked a guy out that grabbed Bret Hart. Well, I'm just saying. Well, I'm like, just saying, but yeah, they They went out there doing, you know, 630s and, know. you know, uh, hey, uh, I, I need you to cut me off. What are you going to do? Well, you dive on top of me and I'll pick you up after you land on me and beat you up. Like, they didn't do that. Like... I listened to an interview earlier, and it was just a little clip of King Kong Bundy getting interviewed. Uh -huh. His interview, and the guy I was interviewing was uh, the guy from Cape Hague Commentaries. Okay. And he more or less said he goes, he goes, everybody's hot about Chris Jericho. He goes, nothing against Chris. I like Chris. I took a crap bigger than Chris this morning. And the guy that was interviewing him said, it used to be about, holy crap, look at that. Yeah. And talking about the guy, and he's like. The Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom, King Kong Bundy. He goes, you were always in my list. He goes, you weren't a big muscle-bound guy. He goes, but you were a big intimidating-looking guy that looks like you rip ripping their heads off. Yeah. So, I mean, I enjoy the cruiserweight style. I, I do. do. But it shouldn't be in every single damn match. Right. And I think that's what I'm getting, like... You sent me a highlight reel of a guy. I don't want to name the guy's name because you... Uh, I will. I don't want His no name was Tank something. He just know. signed with MLW. And I loved it. You but he did everything cruiserweights are doing. That's why I and like he's it. bigger than me. He he was. I like when you see guys doing a style you don't expect them to do. I mean, I like smaller guys that brawl. You know, because you go, oh well, that guy's under two hundred pounds. He's going to be a flippy guy. Um, Adam Priest in Alabama was one of my favorite guys Adam Priest. because like Adam Priest was like four foot eight. Yeah. Um, you could tell he's done a push-up or two, and he wrestled like Dean Malenko. When you saw him, you weren't expecting Dean Malenko, uh, oh, and that's yeah. why I like that. I like this guy. Same reason I like Brody King is because Brody King's a huge dude doing lucha. 
and uh, this guy, his name, I think it was Tank Coleman, but I don't know what it was, and I apologize for not remembering. But uh, if you just watch, you know, just type in MLW and Tank, like they 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 put out a thing about him. Well, what you sent me was a highlight reel, yeah. and I said send me a match. Mm -hmm. Okay, he I can do all him. these flips. I don't know what else he can do. I, I didn't. Care. I hate to see a highlight <laughs> reel. I would really, if you're gonna send me a match to help him get on the show, or because yeah. he sends me matches all the time to get my opinion. And I don't want to see a highlight reel. I want to see a match. Okay, you can do 9,000 flips and dive to the floor and kill yourself. But can you even do a car or an elbow toe? Well, my thought is That's if, my biggest thought. If you don't catch my attention with your highlight video, you're not going to catch my attention with your match. Because I watch a match, and if you don't get my attention in the first three minutes, I'll turn it off. <laughs> That's the truth. So, if you can't start a match and catch somebody's attention in three minutes, and it's a 20-minute match... Something ain't right. And it's not always uh, what moves you can do and how many matches no. you want. Because, like, I remember the first time I saw Ethan Case. I was like, I've got to have this guy in my tournament. He was from, like, South Carolina. And it wasn't because of his offense. It was his defense. He sold so well. I'm like, this guy would be the top baby face somewhere and he was i think he ended up being like out in south carolina i think it was pwx or something like that he was their top baby face because oh my goodness could this guy bump and sell you know uh you know you you know everybody can't be everybody can't be the quarterback you know what i mean um somebody's got to be the guy that gets you know that gets tackled you know but when you sent me that all I saw is a highlight mm -hmm. reel. And I'm sorry, I see highlight reels all the time. I've seen but some that are horrible. Exactly. <laughs> some people don't know how to make a highlight reel, so it makes you look worse. Yeah. So when I seen it, all I'm seeing is flip, 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 flip. And I'm like, but I didn't see it. And honest to God, it was, he did a suplex that I remember. But anything beyond that would be in a wrestling mood. Yeah. So I don't know what else he can do. Yeah. And I just I don't want to see that as a person. If, I, if I'm watching a match to help you try to book somebody, I want to see if you can't get me in the first three minutes. I don't want to watch yeah. it. I'm definitely like uh, <laughs> you talk about the first three minutes of something. Like you know how many times like I stop watching a match just because it's all entrance. I'm like nine the whole match nine minutes. Seven minutes in, y'all ain't even gotten the ring. Got ring. Like come on, man. Like and like I'll give you another example. A W Dark the women's match. Mm -hmm. The two that come in to lose. Their entrance was so damn bland. Like, you, you just walked out there and like, well, I'm going to get beat. I mean, that's what it looked like. Go look at it. I mean, <laughs> I'm not lying. It's on TV. I mean, it's, well, it's YouTube. Go look. Uh, I can't remember the blonde girl. Hers was worse. Hers yeah. was the worst of the two. Like It was it, like Killian and Skylar. I can't remember. I don't know. But Killian I, King and Skylar. You'll see what I mean. Else. If you go watch their entrance, you got to have some personality going out to your ring. you got to... You're supposed to be a larger than live character, even if you're just a wrestler. Mm -hmm. You gotta stick out somehow, some way. Because people go, you got it out of them two's entrances? I would've never thought they had it. Yeah, and that's why they got beat. <laughs> <laughs> and they may be on the indie show and go to go yeah. out and go to win, and they may have the best interest in the world. It's like, uh, you know, uh, I think it was Bruce Pritchard, someone said like James Storm had like poo-poo face or whatever, you always knew he was gonna lose, and Storm's like, look, I didn't go out there having that, but if I had it, why didn't you tell me, like, hey, quit having poo-poo face? And you know, like, he's like, I didn't know I had I didn't go out there going, ooh, let me tell her about that I'm losing. He's like, but if I did, like, but he's like, that's wrestling. Instead of telling you the problem, and tell everybody else. Yeah, you know, if you don't tell the person. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was there, I'd straight tell her, like, yeah, girl, you got to get some kind of pizzazz yeah, going get a little on something. Because something. Yep. that looked horrible. Like, I knew, I, I mean, I knew you were going to lose to begin with because Brandy's out there, yeah. and, you know, I'm like, shit, she ain't losing. So... <laughs> <laughs> Which is not. Come on, you know. But it's, that was my only problem with the match. The match itself was fine, but your entrance mm -hmm. just killed you. Well, the coolest thing I've heard about entrances, and it came from Edge. And Edge was like, "The energy you show going to the ring will be the energy you get from the crowd." Exactly. He's and like, "Don't give them any energy. They're not going to give you any back." Them were feeding people Nyquil, so that's not good. Mm -mm. But uh, so uh, we're going to wrap this up now. Um, any, any final thoughts about anything that we talked about? Basically, if you're a wrestler, have some energy. Have some kind of damn energy. 
And don't make highlight um, videos. <laughs> it ain't don't make highlight <laughs> videos, but show more than you diving to the floor yeah. or doing a 360 or 450 or what? A, show me that you can call an elbow tie up. Show me an arm drag. Show me something. Not not everybody is looking to book gifts. No, I, I, so. I could care less. I, and I don't care if you can make certain body parts flip other people. Yeah. But I, I want to see wrestling. So uh, let us know your thoughts on uh, what do you like as a fan? Uh, highlight over match if you're judge, you're gonna you know check somebody out or or judge them for the first time or whatever. And uh, let us know your opinion on if you think wrestling will be different and if so how it would be different in the comments i'm curious what everybody's got to say um you know I, I i think the territorial return you know the old school like let's make it believable is going to be what works well before you leave i know we're kind of short but shakar is dead uh what well, gays Picosi. yeah his company's dead. evolved it's dead really yes so there goes two I didn't know that. Yes, I just found it out the other day. Why is it gone? So, uh, you got me, brother. Yeah. Uh, Jim Cornette was talking about it being gone. They were like, well, what do you think? And he's like, do you think he'll be in wrestling anymore? And he said, you know, could he go to another company? He's another guy. If NWA got a hold of him, I think I'd be He works for NXT, thing. though. Gabe is an uh, NXT guy. That's true. Well, I'm just yeah. saying. So, I was just throwing it out there. Yep. So, uh, uh, yeah, let us know any rumors you've heard. Because <laughs> well, maybe we had our own involves again. So, so uh, until next time. Watch wrestling. Watch wrestling. Yeah, that's fine.